So what we're going to look at now is setting up uh, an IK leg. And I've set one up on the right leg just to show you how it works. And this is, uh, this is a, a simple IK setup using groups. Uh, this doesn't look at the reverse foot setup where you've got foot rolls and toe rolls and that kind of thing. Uh, I'll do that in a separate video. So this is just a very um, straightforward, easy IK setup. And you'll use a similar system for the, uh, for the arms as well. So as you can see, I've got a, uh, a foot control that um, when you move it up and rotate it, um, you get all the all the kind of foot control that you need. You've got the extra uh, toe rotation that you need, and you've got the the knee, which is the pole vector as well. Okay, so that's the simple uh, simple setup that we're going to go with. I've also given um, just as a an extra little bit of detail for the rig. It's just nice for the animator to to see where the knee's pointing. We'll look at setting up this this curve. And it's joined uh, from the knee to the uh, knee controller, and it just uh, easily lets you see the direction that the knee is pointed. So um, yeah, that works quite nice and, and simple. Uh, and I've animated with these uh, with this system for quite a while, and it works very nicely. Um, and obviously. Um, the, once you zero out the controls, it all goes back to default. Okay. What we'll look at here as well is the fact that the leg joints are, they're not in that true orthographic. They're not uh, pointing forward. The leg is pointing at an angle. And I think as a, a rigger, you need to know how to do that. You need to know how to set up a, a good knee uh, that doesn't, uh, make the, the leg snap to a, a weird position. It keeps everything in its original position. And so you can see the controls are also aligned with that direction as well. I like to think that, um, you know, the, the character modeler can model things uh, a lot more natural. And, and in that sense, uh, the arms are at the A pose and the legs are slightly ajar. It makes the whole thing look a lot more natural. Uh, and so the rigger needs to be able to set that up. Okay, so let's uh, make a start and, uh, and get that going. Um, what I shall do, I'll just group group off um, the right um, IK leg just as a, a temporary thing, and let me let me hide it so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. So firstly, we will um, do uh, an IK chain from the thigh to the ankle. And this is the main leg IK. This IK chain also will require a knee control as well. And to make sure it has that nice knee, which obviously gives the twist, we need to have a rotate plane IK. When you create an IK chain, you've got two choices. So let's go to skeleton, create IK handle, and you get two choices. You get a rotate plane or you get a single chain. Okay, Rotate plane is there for having the, the extra twist controls, and that's what we'll use to set up the, the knee controller. So for the main, uh, same for the arms as well. If you want an elbow control, make sure you have the rotate plane. So make sure that's selected, and we will always go from the thigh joint to the ankle joint. Okay. And as you can see, that creates an IK handle in your outliner. And if I move it up and down, um, it obviously moves uh, that initial IK for the leg. As you can see though, you've got no control over the foot rotation at all, so we'll deal with that shortly. 
if you are testing it, um, make sure you undo as it's not zeroed out. So if you want to do a little test, just make sure you undo it. Just always, whenever you're testing anything in the rig, return it back to its default position before you move on. Otherwise, you'll start rigging in really weird um, uh, positions. Okay, so I'm always a fan of naming as you go. Rig underscore ankle underscore left underscore ikh that um i always use the suffix ikh because it's an ik handle all right now we're going to create a single chain from the ankle to the toe so go to create ik handle and make sure it's a single chain this time because we don't want any twists Make sure you, you can zoom in and select the uh, ankle to the toe. Okay. And again, let's call this rig underscore toe underscore left underscore IKH. All right. So these two IK handles you then group together. So just Control G will create a group, and again, let's call this rig underscore um, foot underscore left underscore I K H underscore group. Okay, it might sound like it's a long chain, but but name it meaningful. Um, so this is the 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 left foot I K handles group. And you can see when you create the group, um, it's creating the pivot point at the origin. And this pivot point is crucial uh, to place. So I'm going to uh, move the pivot to the toe. Okay. You can actually move the pivot to the ankle, but I just prefer um, when you select, uh, I much prefer when animating that the pivot is all done around the toe so you can have that extra contact with the, with the ground okay so as you can see that group now because the two IK handles are um, children of that group when I move the group okay you've got the IK handle but because we've now added that single chain it's now dealing very nicely with the, with the rotations okay so we're, we're getting there, and that, that's using groups um, as a real good, solid, basic setup for, for IK limbs. Let's have a look now um, at just creating some controls. Okay, So I will create a NURBS circle, and this will be the foot. So I'm just going to make it a little bit elongated, freeze transforms and delete history. Okay. And with the rigging controls, uh, a great way of just kind of shaping them as you need is to right click and go to your control verts. So it, it highlights them in, in pink. And then you can right click and select all. So I'm just going to move that curve back and by editing the control verts you're not actually moving the pivot point of that uh, of that curve itself okay um, obviously shape it as you want to um, for example if you want it to look a little bit um, foot like then you can do things like that and let me just select all and just move it a little bit forward okay Okay, so go back to object mode and you can see that, that all I did was move the control verts of the curve and it's kept the, the actual pivot of the object intact. Okay. Um, so let me call this uh, rig underscore foot underscore left underscore I use CTRL for control. Okay. And I'm going to group it. Okay, so 
uh, let's rename this. I'm going to steal the actual name of the control and paste it and just end it with underscore GRP. Okay. Now when you rig in, you use um, you often group the uh, control, okay? And that's because um, when you're positioning the um, the controls, you ideally want um, every, the controls to be zeroed out once they're in position, okay? And the best way of doing that is you use the group um, to position. So, for example, if I just V snap that to the, the um, toe. The group is absorbing the, the translate, um, but underneath it, the control itself is all zeroed out. So groups are great for this, for, for absorbing any transforms or rotations to make sure that the, um, the control underneath it is all zeroed out. Okay. So I've moved it into position. However, I want the control to be nicely aligned exactly with the plane of the of the foot and I don't want to best guess it okay uh, and that's because when I want to rotate the foot it nicely rotates in exactly the plane okay um, so I'm going to just zero out right so how do we find out what that rotation of the foot is okay uh, what that rotation of the leg plane is and the easiest way I found uh, of doing this is with some um, a locator and uh, an aim constraint um, you can read off the values quite nicely without really getting stuck into maths okay so let's create a locator and that will create it at the origin don't forget with locators, if you scale it up to make it a little bit more visible, okay, and then if you freeze transforms, it always goes back, um, so it resets the scale back to 1, okay. So if you want to increase the, the scale of the locator um, and keep it there, um, if you look under its local scale, um, that's where you make the changes. So if I go to 5, um, then any freeze transforms won't take it back to that in initial default size. Okay. So I'm going to v-snap it to the toe um, because if I snap it to the toe and aim it to the toe end, I should get that, that angle of the, of the plane. Okay. Um, so let's v-snap it to the toe and freeze transform so it's zero down. So as you can see, the Z axis of the locator is pointing forward. So if I aim the Z axis at this toe end, so ultimately you'll end up with something like that, you'll be able to read off the rotate value. Okay? Uh, this is a, a really cool technique uh, and I use it in rigging all the time to, to find out um, angles of things. Okay, so with constraints you always select the driver first and then you select the driven second. So uh, the driver is the toe end. And then I'm going to constrain aim. Okay, now the aim vector um, is you have a space for X, Y, and Z, all right? So I'm going to aim the Z to get the correct angle. Okay, so make sure um, it's uh, Z is 1, which means that that's the, the axis. And the up vector is, is Y, so I'm going to keep Y as, as up. And the world up time, I'm going to carry on, the scene is up. So it will always maintain that Y is up. Okay, and click on apply and as you can see it's now aimed the z-axis at that, um, that toe end joint. All right. um, so it's given the aim constraint underneath the locator, I can delete it, I just used it there for alignment and there you can see the rotate y value is 8.663 so that's what I want to read off so remember that 
Okay. I'm just going to temporarily hide the locator. Uh, I might need it later. So going back to the, um, the foot control group, if I rotate the Y 8.663, you can see it's exactly aligned with the foot. Okay, so now I know that if I rotate in the local axis, it will always rotate in the in the plane. So that's a, a really good technique. Okay. So just to recap, I've got the group with the two IK handles. So I'm going to parent that group underneath my foot control. So just middle drag on top, and you can see I've got the foot control and then the group underneath that. So what I have is when I lift the control of the foot, I get the proper IK translations. And when I rotate it, it rotates nicely in the plane, um, but I can also rotate it as well. Okay, And because the group has absorbed all the translations and rotations, when I zero it out, it goes back to default. All right.